Hey everybody, welcome back to Living Traditions Homestead. I thought I would bring you guys along out into the greenhouse today to show you how some of the plants are doing that we have started so far this year for the farmer's market. Uh, we brought you along for some of the planting of these plants, but uh, many of them we've started off camera, so I thought I would just bring you along. Out here right now, we've got uh, roughly a thousand plants started. I think I just added them up, it was like 992 plants that we have started out here. We've got about another 600 or 650 pepper plants started inside the sprout house. And next week will be when we're starting all of our tomato seeds. So it is an exciting time of year here on the homestead where we just really are hard at work trying to get as many plants started as we can so that in April and May, we can hit the road running at the farmer's market. Now, some of the plants that are in the greenhouse right now will actually be plants that get ended up being planted in the greenhouse. A few weeks ago, or maybe a month or so ago, we did a video and I was telling you guys a little bit about how to figure out when to plant inside of your high tunnel. Uh, some of you had questions about that, so I'm gonna review some of that with you today. But first, let's take a closer look at some of the plants so you can just see how amazing they're doing. First thing that I wanna show you guys is how awesome this lettuce mix is. We showed you guys this mix in the past, but this is our absolute favorite mix of lettuce from Baker Creek. It's called Rocky Top Mix. It's just a good variety of a lot of different lettuce varieties, but it comes all in one packet and it just always does really, really well for us and it's delicious. We also have all of our tomatoes started for the greenhouse. The ones that will actually be planted here in the greenhouse this year. This is a combination of slicing tomatoes. We have uh, Jet Stars, which are, you know, are our favorite slicing tomato. Oh, we also have the Juliettes and Large Red Cherries. Uh, those did fantastic in the greenhouse last year. And then we're trying some paste tomatoes in here this year as well. We're doing the Amish paste and Sarah's favorite, the Salvaterra Select. So all of these will be planted in the greenhouse this year. I do have some additional tomato plants started here. Uh, like I said, next week will be the week where we start all of our tomatoes that will be going to the farmer's market. But I started a few a little bit on the early side this year just so that I can up pot these as we get closer to the market and sell these as bigger plants in like one gallon pots because every year we do get some requests for that. So hopefully we'll have at least a few in bigger pots this year that will be even more ready to get right into the garden. Sarah's got a ton of different herbs started. She's got even more started in the sprout house. And then we've got a bunch of brassicas. We've got broccoli and cauliflower and cabbage. Some of these will be going into our own garden and some of these will be coming along to the farmer's market. So just a good variety of plants started out here, you guys. And it is just exciting to see all of this starting to grow. Now we're by no means done with winter. So at this time of year, the plants come out here during the day. We move them all back into the sprout house overnight so they stay nice and warm. Uh, we won't be keeping the, leaving them outside overnight until the nighttime temperatures are closer to about 50 degrees. So we've got probably another few weeks before that will start to happen on a consistent basis. I did want to take you guys along into the sprout house today though because there's something that I've been thinking about doing for the last couple years and I just haven't gotten around to it. So this year I've actually decided to do it. Uh, I told you guys in a recent video, I think it was when we were inside the house on a cold winter day that my goal for this year, now that we're down to having just this one property is I wanna make homesteading fun again. So this year there are some things that I'm gonna be doing just for fun, has nothing to do with selling at the farmer's market. Doesn't even matter to me how well they end up doing. I'm just doing them for fun because I think it'll be a good experiment. So let's head into the Sprout House. It will, I'll talk to you more about what my plan is once we get inside. All right, we're inside the Sprout House. Now, for any of you who may be new, the Sprout House is a portable building that we have here on the homestead that we use exclusively for starting seeds in. 
We keep it heated so that it stays at the optimal temperature for starting seeds. We have all of our grow lights in here and then we just start all of our seeds in here. And this is also where all of the plants go at night from the greenhouse if it's too cold. We bring them all in here. Sometimes we have all the shelves filled, we have the workbench filled, we even have the floor filled a lot of times just to keep plants in overnight and then they go back out the next morning. So that's where I am now. I'm inside of the sprout house. It's nice and warm in here and it's a good day to be working inside because it's a little cold and windy outside. It's nice and sunny, which means it's nice and warm in the greenhouse, but outside it's actually a little bit chilly and windy today. So like I told you guys a minute ago, uh, my goal for this year is to do at least a few things on my list that I haven't gotten around to in the last few years. And they're things that aren't really necessary, but they're things that I think will make homesteading fun again. Now, any of you who have been watching our channel over the last few years know that I absolutely love tomatoes. In fact, in the summertime, you'll very rarely find me working outside without a salt shaker in my pocket or at least within arm's length so that at any point I can grab a tomato, put some salt on it, and just eat it right wherever I am. And so we grow a lot of tomatoes, a lot of variety of tomatoes, and just a lot of tomatoes in general because I will eat pretty much as many as I can. So this winter, as we're sitting around looking through seed catalogs and other things, I got the idea like, what would be something really fun that I can do with tomatoes this year? And then I started doing a little bit of research online and I thought, you know what? What is the world's largest tomato and what is the world's smallest tomato? So I started doing some research about those. I found out what both of them were. And this year I am going to try growing the world's largest and the world's smallest tomatoes in our greenhouse. Now, the giant tomatoes were the hardest to find. Uh, they are a variety called Giant Domingo. And from everything that I could read, these are supposed to be the largest tomato in the world. I ended up finding these seeds on Etsy from someone who just saved seeds that they grew last year. And it says on the package here that I received that these particular seeds came from a tomato that was 3 pounds and 11 ounces. Now I think the world's largest tomato is actually quite a bit bigger than that, but it was this variety, this giant Domingo. So uh, we're going to be starting some of those seeds today. And then I also wanted to find the world's smallest tomato. I also found those on Etsy, and these are the seeds for the world's smallest tomato right here. These are from a variety called Tomberry. They are a tiny tiny tomato seed, um, or tomato. You can actually fit like several of them on a spoon. That's how tiny they are. They're about the size of a blueberry from what I can see on the pictures, maybe even a little bit smaller. So I think these are going to be really fun to try. Now these seeds that actually came with quite a few, the giant Domingo seeds, there were only 12 seeds in here. So I'm hoping that we get good germination so that if they do well, I can save seed for future years as well. So I've got some six packs uh, set up here. I'm only going to start six of each plant for today because we are a little bit on the early side and I just want to see how the germination does on these. So I'm going to start six today and then down the road hopefully I'll start a few more as well. Now since these will be going in the greenhouse, uh, we do need to get them going because the greenhouse will actually be planted about a month or maybe even a little more than a month earlier than what we plant things outside. Our last frost date here in our part of Missouri is technically April 15th, but to be honest, we never plant anything outside before May 15th because it always seems like right around the end of uh, April, we still get one last frost. And that has caused some problems for us in the past where we've already had plants out and we've completely lost them. So we always hold off till at least May 15th before we plant anything because the soil by that time is a little bit warmer and the plants just take off and there's no risk of frost by that point. Now I did tell you guys when we were out in the greenhouse that I would review how I figure out when to plant inside of our high tunnel. After reading a lot of different resources, the plan that we came up with is that in order to figure out when to plant in a high tunnel versus outside, the best thing to do is basically pretend like you're moving 500 miles to the south. 
Now, in our case, if we went 500 miles south, we would end up in the ocean. So we didn't do that. We actually kind of went southwest because we figured that would be, you know, about where we would go. For us, that takes us to about Dallas, Texas. So then what I did is I went online and I printed out a Dallas, Texas planting calendar. And that is what we will go off of from now on for our high tunnel. I think that's a pretty safe way of doing it. Uh, if you guys have other ways of doing it, uh, we'd love to hear that in the comments. But for us, this seems to be just about right. This is about when we planted last year in the high tunnel and everything did really, really well. Now, the other question that we get a lot is, well, how do I know how far I had to actually start my seeds? And I know Sarah went over this in a recent video as well, but we've actually put together this awesome cheat sheet that's got just a ton of different plants. Uh, Sarah put together one here for vegetables, for flowers, for herbs, all different things. Uh, we have this in our Etsy shop. You can download it for $2. And it applies to all planting zones. So it doesn't matter what planting zone you're in, as long as you know your last frost date, or really more importantly, what date you hope to have the plants in the ground. Uh, it will tell you when you need to start your seed and all of the different requirements that those types of seeds require. So if you're interested in that, go check that out in our Etsy shop. It's only $2 and it is a great, great information that should hopefully save you guys a lot of time. Now I plant things just a little bit differently than Sarah does. So I'm going to show you my way of planting things today, uh, mostly because my fingers are bigger and at least some of these tiny little seeds are harder for me to pick up than Sarah's. So the way that I like to plant, especially small seeds like this, is I use a little container and I will pour my seeds into the container. And then what I like to do is use a pen now, tomato seeds in general should be about an eighth to a quarter of an inch under the soil. These tiny little seeds, I'm going to do closer to the eighth inch because we want to make sure that they can, you know, as they germinate, really come up well. So we're just going to take a pen. And what I like to do is just take a pen like this with the tip in, and I'll just make a tiny little indent about an eighth of an inch deep in the soil. You can really do this with anything, but for me, a pen just works really well. And then because these seeds are so hard for me to pick up, what I do is I use a toothpick. And if you just wet it a little bit like this, you can use a toothpick and it will pick up one little seed at a time. And then you can just touch it on the soil and that seed will come off. So I'm actually going to plant one of these in each hole. You can see how easy that is because you can make sure that you get it in exactly the right spot. And if you got bigger fingers, fatter fingers like I do, uh, this makes it really easy. So just touch your toothpick to the seed, put it in the pot, and that's all there is to it. We've got all six of these planted. Now all I'll do is just very gently put a little bit of soil over that seed. Now tomatoes do need warmer soil in order to germinate, so we're going to not only water these well, we're also going to put them on a heat mat. And typically tomatoes will germinate in about 7 to 10 days. And I know these little seeds are probably really hard to see on video, so I will show you again what the toothpick thing looks like. I'll do a close-up as I'm doing these giant seeds because the giant seeds will be much easier to see. All right, so we still have quite a few of these left. If we don't get good germination on just these six, we'll be able to plant more and hopefully get better results by just planting a lot of them. So we're going to do exactly the same thing as before. We're going to make just a little indentation with our pen. And these are considerably bigger seeds. And then again, just wet your toothpick just a little bit and just touch it to one of the seeds and just put it there in the soil. And we're just going to do that for all six of those. Another tip, always make sure before you start watering, you put your seeds away because I've accidentally watered whole packets of seeds and that's never fun either. So for seeds, when we first start seeds, we like to use these pump up bottles. That one doesn't have much in it, so I'll use this one. 
and then we'll just spray gently over the top. We don't want to spray too much because we don't want the seed to kind of float up out of the container. And I'm doing these in these six packs instead of plug trays because we're just doing a few like this. I don't want to take up the shelf space with a whole plug tray. So we'll just do them in these and then I won't have to transplant them into a bigger pot nearly as soon either. So we're keeping the sprout house warm enough that between the heat mat and just the warmer air temperature in here, everything should be fine to get these to germinate. All right, that should be all that that needs. And then what we'll do is we will take a piece of saran wrap. We're just gonna cover each of these with a piece of saran wrap, and that will help keep the moisture level up while those seeds start to germinate. All right, we can put these here on this open heat mat that we have. And we'll be watering these for about the next week or so. And then I'll be back with you guys. We'll see what kind of germination we have in about a week. Well, you guys, it's been eight days since we planted the seeds for the world's largest and world's smallest tomatoes. And I'm excited to announce that we have some germination. So that is really exciting. Let me turn these uh, grow lights off so you guys can see a little bit better. Well, let's start with the giant Domingo. You can see that out of the six, as of right now, we have two of the giant Domingo that are coming up. So not the best germination, but uh, you know, at least we're getting some. And I'm still hopeful that the other four may come up or at least a couple more. I have decided to keep the saran wrap off now because I don't want the two that are already up to be affected by too much moisture. So um, I'm going to keep these on the heat yet, but we're going to leave them uncovered. And then you'll see for the Tom Berries, the world's smallest tomatoes, that we also have two of those that are up. So again, not the best germination, but I'm excited just to have the couple that come up and I'll probably get more started. Really, if I get enough to come up that can grow in the uh, greenhouse and we can save our own seeds from here on out, I think that that will be fun and exciting and uh, I'm just really happy to have these and just try them and see how they taste. We'll see if we can do better than the three pound 11 ounce fruit that the big one came from and I'm really excited just to see how tiny these Tom Berries really are. So you guys, I'd love to know what are you doing on your homestead this year just to have fun? Not as far as work goes, but maybe just something extra that you're doing that you think will be fun this year. I challenge all of you to do at least one thing that you don't have to do, but that you'll find fun. So let me know down in the comments what it's going to be for you on your homestead. I'll give you guys updates as we go throughout the growing season on these. And of course, once I'm ready to start eating some of these tomatoes, you guys will be the first to know. Hey, if you're enjoying our channel and you enjoy the type of content that we put out, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to hit that subscribe button before you leave so you'll be notified of all of our new videos. And don't forget that always the best way that you can help us is just by sharing our videos with your others on your social media that you think may enjoy them. Until next time, thank you so much for stopping by our homestead. Take care and God bless.